Hey, what's up guys? So I wanted to start our series on micronutrients out with a micronutrient that flies way under the radar and that is vitamin A. Now, um, a lot of you guys have been hearing a lot lately about things like vitamin D and vitamin K as well as vitamin E, which are your primary fat soluble vitamins. However, vitamin A is your fourth fat soluble vitamin that flies way under the radar and there just really isn't a lot of good content out there on the association and the benefits of consuming adequate amounts of vitamin A. A when it comes to overall health and there's even less um, good content out there when it comes to the association um, of vitamin A and testicular health and so that's what this video is going to be all about. Now again vitamin A is one of your four fat soluble vitamins which include things like vitamin D, vitamin K, vitamin E and um, technically vitamin A is actually a class of compounds and you have two primary classes of compounds when it comes to vitamin A. You have things like retinol and retinoic acid which are your primary primary active forms of vitamin A in the body. And dietarily speaking, these primarily come from animal food sources. And then you also have um, a class of carotenoids, which are um, technically not even bioactive um, and need to be converted into active forms of vitamin A. And these are things like beta carotene and are primarily found in plant sources. Now, there are several functions of vitamin A in the body, especially if you dive super deep into the gene regulatory properties of vitamin A. However, for the sake of this video, there are three primary ones that I want to touch on real quick. And the first one and most well-established role of vitamin A in the body seems to be its ability to improve eye health and its integral role in um, eye development and eye health just in general. And one of the primary symptoms of vitamin A deficiency that really shows up first is typically nighttime blindness followed by eventually complete blindness if this vitamin A deficiency Efficiency is never corrected. Now, the second primary function of vitamin A appears to be um, its ability to regulate the immune system. And without adequate amounts of vitamin A in the diet, um, you actually run the risk of immune system failure, which definitely isn't any good. And then the third primary role of vitamin A in the body seems to be its ability to regulate growth kind of just in a general fashion. And then the fourth one that I want to talk about primarily in this video is the benefit and the role of vitamin A that really just doesn't get any attention at all. And that is, again, its ability to regulate testicular health, fertility, and testosterone levels. Now, the first study that we're going to be looking at today is a study that was published in a review study that was published in 2010 that dove super deep into the um, regulatory properties of vitamin A specifically on fertility. Now, in this study, the authors concluded that the combined action of follicle-stimulating hormone, testosterone, and retinoic acid are essential for normal mammalian spermatogenesis. Follicle-stimulating acts on Sertoli cells and may affect spermatogonial populations. Retinoic acid acts on both Sertoli cells and germ cells and pushes undifferentiated spermatogonia into the differentiation pathway and eventually myotic prophase. Testosterone also acts on Sertoli cells and is necessary for round spermatid formation. Given the complexities associated with the retinoid storage, transport, and uptake, the number of elements in the retinoid signaling pathway, the multiple intracellular receptors, and the control of the overall organization of spermatogenesis, the potential for male fertility pathologies associated with vitamin A activity is large. And so when it comes to the role of vitamin A in spermatogenesis and sperm production, it does appear as though vitamin A has a dual role um, when it comes to sperm production. One is that it appears to have a direct regulatory function in the Sertoli cells, which are the cells that actually produce sperm in response to follicle stimulating hormone, which means that vitamin Vitamin A is kind of like a cofactor when it comes to sperm production. Yes, uh, the Sertoli cells need to be responding to follicle stimulating hormone, but it does appear that vitamin A is somewhat of a cofactor needed to initiate the process of spermatogenesis. But what's also interesting here is that it appears that the sperm cells themselves also respond to vitamin A kind of like as a growth factor. And so the vitamin A presence is needed in order for the proper development and growth 
growth of the sperm cells themselves. And so um, it does appear that vitamin A has somewhat of an integral role in the production of sperm. Now, the next study we're going to be looking at today is extremely interesting. It's probably the more interesting study that we're going to look at in this video. And that is this study right here that was performed and sent out to assess the, the effects of vitamin A and its role in puberty specifically. And so essentially what this study did was it took a cohort of young men, some young boys that were suffering from delayed puberty and essentially gave them three separate different treatments, split them into three groups, gave one group um, oxandrolone, which is essentially Anivar, a designer steroid. And then they gave the second group um, essentially just TRT. They gave them um, injections of testosterone to kind of initiate uh, the onset of puberty. And then the third group, they simply just gave a combination of vitamin A and iron. And what's most interesting about this study is that after six months of treatment, this is what they found. Six months of vitamin A supplementation induced growth acceleration similar to that seen in the oxandrolone and testosterone treated children and was significantly higher than in the control group. While in the vitamin A supplemented group, an increase in testicular volume was induced by the end of the first six months of supplementation, while no increase in testicular volume was noted in any other group. And so this study is pretty wild and I'm sure you can see why this is so interesting. Um, you essentially saw the uh, same amount of growth come from vitamin A supplementation when compared to Anivar and testosterone. Now, it is worth noting that the children that received the Anivar and testosterone supplementation did gain more overall mass, but when it comes to just overall growth and height growth, the vitamin A supplementation group um, did see equal amounts of growth there and did see uh, growth in testicular volume that the other two groups did not see. Now, later on in the study, the authors were speculating as to why this could have been and kind of speculating as to what the mechanisms of action can be, and this is what they said. It was shown that supplementation with 10,000 units of vitamin A per day for three months leads to a significant increase in nocturnal growth growth hormone secretion in 9 out of 12 children with neurosecretory dysfunction. In another study, vitamin A levels were lower in CDGP children than in age-matched controls. The authors suggested that vitamin A deficiency contributes to delayed puberty via a decrease in growth hormone secretion and retarded growth. Recent evidence from in vitro studies has shown that retinoic acid is an important regulator of gonadotropic releasing hormone neurons and the development of the testes, indicating a possible role for vitamin A in some stages of of puberty. These findings support the possibility that vitamin A supplementation in our study accelerated growth and induced puberty. And so the researchers here were hypothesizing that the primary mechanisms of action uh, when it comes to vitamin A and its role in growth is that it one has a primary function in supporting the production of growth hormone and then two is that it also appears that vitamin A may be a uh, positive regulator of gonadotropic releasing hormone uh, which is the hormone that essentially initiates gonadotropin release. And so this study doesn't absolutely establish the effects of vitamin A on testosterone production, but it does lend to the body of research and the body of evidence that, that does suggest that there is an integral role of vitamin A in not just fertility, uh, but also growth and testicular function. However, there is some rodent data that does suggest that vitamin A does have an integral role in testosterone production. And in this study in particular, uh, the researchers noted this, that from day 63 onward, the acute vitamin A deficiency symptoms started to develop in the experimental group of the animals. These symptoms included loss of body weight associated with a loss of appetite, puffy appearance in the facial regions with coarse body fur, eye infections, and eventually blindness. No such changes were observed in any other groups. Vitamin A deficiency status was confirmed by depletion of retinol in the plasma as well as in the liver in the experimental groups of animals. Plasma testosterone levels were significantly decreased in vitamin A deficient groups in comparison to the other groups. And later on in the study, the researchers gave this as a possible mechanism of action. It has been reported that calcium ions increase the rate at which cholesterol associates with chromosome P4 50. It has also been suggested that PBRs are involved in calcium channels and peripheral tissues. Thus, the down regulation of PBRs due to a vitamin A deficiency may cause a decrease in the mitochondrial steroidogenesis by limiting the transport of cholesterol and calcium influx from extra mitochondrial 
mitochondrial stores into the mitochondria. Now, this study does give a fairly novel uh, mechanism of action when it comes to the role of vitamin A in testosterone production. However, when you take all of these studies in context and put them together, one thing does become extremely clear, and that is that vitamin A has a very um, uh, integral role in the production of testosterone, the production of sperm, as well as just general uh, growth and testicular health. So now that we've talked about the roles of vitamin A as well as the mechanisms of action, uh, the last thing I want to talk about in this video before we close this out is how to get enough vitamin A in your diet. Now, things can tend to get a little bit tricky here, but there's one primary thing that you want to keep in mind here, and that is that there's two classes of vitamin A. One is preformed vitamin A, which is retinol and retinoic acid, which are found in animal uh, food sources. And then you have your carotenoids, um, things like beta carotene that are primarily found in plant sources that are inactive and need to be converted into active forms of vitamin A. Now, the issue here is that the conversion from inactive forms of vitamin A into active forms of vitamin A in humans is extremely inefficient, which means that you roughly need about 12 times the amount of plant-sourced vitamin A to equal the same amount of vitamin A that you would get from an animal source. Now, generally speaking, you need roughly about 0.8 milligrams of uh, preformed vitamin A per day, which means that you need roughly about 9.6 milligrams of carotenoids or beta carotene from plant sources to equal um, that same amount of vitamin A that you would be getting from animal sources. Now, in order to get 9.6 milligrams of vitamin A from plant sources, you would need to eat per day roughly six large sweet potatoes or three pounds of kale in order to equal the same amount of vitamin A that you can get from one third of an ounce of beef liver or one single teaspoon of cod liver oil. And so I think it goes without saying that I'm a huge fan of consuming um, any type of liver, cod liver oil, beef liver, um, whatever it might be, chicken liver, I really don't care. Animal liver is literally the most vitamin A dense food source on the entire planet it and without consuming things um, like liver, it is fairly difficult to um, get enough vitamin A through your diet. Now, it is possible by consuming things uh, like fish and dairy and eggs in order to get your vitamin A content. However, it is extremely inefficient and difficult to meet your dietary requirements of vitamin A through the consumption of things like sweet potatoes, carrots, and kale. Now, I realize that beef liver uh, gets a lot of uh, flavor lack nowadays for the hype train that the liver king created surrounding beef liver, but that does not negate how potent of a micronutrient profile uh, beef liver has at the end of the day. Now, if you guys are trying to optimize your uh, personal testosterone levels, one of the most practical things that you guys can do in order to start that journey is just to simply get a testosterone test done. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to get an at-home test done. And so if you guys are interested in something like that, I would highly recommend my friends over at Let's Get Checked. We've been partnered together for a while now and they're a fantastic service and one of the most convenient ways to test your testosterone at home as well as your estrogen levels and your SHBG levels as well as your free androgen index. And so if you guys are interested in something like this, again, there's going to be a link in the description uh, for you guys to check that out as well as a link to the full guide to supplementation. So if you guys are interested in supplements that can be used to optimize your testosterone levels, there's also going to be a link in the description for that. But other than that, guys, that's all I have for this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I will see you guys next time.